Hi, in this video I'm going to show a basic overview of how to use Stata for someone who's a beginner. Stata, um, statistical software, which does quite a lot and um, is a good value to use. Um, here you can see that as you open Stata by default, it has a variety of windows that are open. You might see also um, this window down here in the corner, I've, I had closed it online. You can resize these video windows, you can open it, um, close and open things to customize it the way you want. I'll start off with showing you the way it is by default. You see this large window here. This large window here is where the results go. Here you will see um, everything you've run along with the particular code data used to run it. This is not saved anywhere to your computer by default. If you want to save things, you either have to copy and paste sections of it as you go, or you have to open what's called a log file to, to have it saved to another file at the same time. Over here, you will see the list of all the variables that are in your data set. Right now, there's none. I've opened Stata, but I haven't imported any data in or entered any data in in any way. So you don't see any variables listed. Down here, you'll see the properties of whichever variable you you clicked on or is highlighted at that time which right now isn't anything i typically close that window so that i can see more variables instead um, down here at the bottom this window is called the command window this one is used for typing code directly into stata um, you can either di um, directly enter code or you can use the drop downs up here to have stata do things um, most people find that as they learn commands, typing them in here is much faster than finding them through the drop downs. However, the drop downs can be useful when you don't know what the command is for something. So often we use a little bit of a combination of both, but it's, it's helpful as you learn it to do more and more directly in here. The commands are quick, they're intuitive. Um, if you keep a list of the ones that you typically use somewhere, it can be very um, efficient way to, to do things in Stata. Over here, this will be the history. This will show you, we'll see it in a minute, a history of every command that you have run in Stata so far. That's very useful if you want to, first of all, just rem remember what command you used in the past, but more importantly, often you may re want to run a command again um, and it'll be here for you. You can actually click on it and it'll pop in the command window. We'll show that later. Or um, you may want to modify a command. You want, may want to start with it, one you used previously and modify it a little bit. And so that becomes quite quick to use that over there. Up here we have various drop downs that are used most that are used. This one is for opening and closing files, saving data. This one is um, helpful for generally doing your basic copying and pasting, although the control C, control V works. Data is where we find um, commands to change our data, to modify our data in various ways. Graphics does graphics. Um, the first, the ones at the top tend to be ones that people use all the time or might use in an introductory class, but just um, the most basic um, commands that are used most often, while below are, are much more complex graphs that are available. Statistics is the biggest tab, has the most things, and it, um, it can be a little hard to navigate through here to find exactly what you want because things can be nested layers and layers in. Um, most of the things that are done, almost everything that's done in, a, in like an intro stats class will be right here under summary, summaries, tables, and tests. None of these other things will be used with the exception of maybe a linear model if, if the intro class included linear regression. So right here under summaries, tables, and tests, for example, you're going to see summary statistics. You're going to see frequency tables. Um, you're going to see all the classical tests of hypotheses, so your basic t-tests, z-tests, and so forth. Okay, also some, some things that are a little more complicated here, like um, non-parametrics will also be in this section. Stata does really a lot, and so finding things in here can also be the hardest part, but once you've found it, you can, if you note the code down, then you don't have to go hunting through this list in the future. Um, 
don't use this one all that much. The windows allows you to open and close which windows are showing. These are the windows that are by default showing um, on the screen right now, but also some, some other um, options. And help, of course, is where you go to, to get some help, to um, search for help on a topic, to get an overview PDF documentation and so forth. Okay, these down here, these icons underneath, um, are just things that are done very, very often. Okay, that opens, so you have to open a file to save. This, this opens data, this saves data. Now your results, your data itself. If you made modifications to a data set, you would use this. Okay, print, prints, just prints results out that you've got. Um, <clears throat> this is another way to open and close log files, which are a way of sending all your results to another file. Um, and, and you can see there's, it brings your graph window so you can see it. Do file is a way of write, um, Having a, a file where you write syntax like a program, you can run all or pieces of it at a time. And um, quick ways to get to the place where we edit data and um, managing variables. So these things, I, I don't typically use them very often, but some people probably use them a lot. It's just a matter of habit and which, which way is the quickest for you to, to get to things. So that's a, the basic overview of what you find on the screen here. Okay, as you can see, we have no variables yet because we have not opened a data set. One choice is to open a data set. Another choice, of course, is to type in data. Um, we'll do that first here as an exercise. Um, to type in data, what you want to do is open the, the data viewer screen, the data window, and there's a couple ways that that can be done. One is to go to data, okay, up here. Um, we're going to go to where it says data editor. You see there's two choices here, edit or browse. The edit window opens the data um, screen and allows you to actually change, enter, or just revise whatever your data. Well, browse allows you to look at it but not change it. So the browse is a little safer if you don't want to accidentally type over and change any data. Um, if you're worried about that, then you would open browse. Otherwise, you would open edit. So that's one way to get to it. Um, another way to get to it is to click on this button here, okay, which, which is the data that just shows you um, the edit screen, or this one which just allows you to look at the browse screen. So you can do that, um, one of those. Or the other way is to just type it in down here, either type in edit, hit enter, or type browse and hit enter. All three of those ways will get you the same place. I'm gonna type edit okay here and hit enter and what you're going to see up here is is this um, editing screen um, i also want to show you when that happened when i did that notice down here in my history gives me a line one edit that's the actual command that was run it will show it that way even if you if you used one of these other options with the drop downs or the icon here to, to do the edit it also shows in here in the results window what command was run. Okay, so I've got this screen open here. Don't worry about this over here quite yet. What we're gonna do is just type in some sample data. Let's suppose that I wanna type in um, gender and I'm gonna use one for male, two for female. So I just type in, I'm making this up. Okay, I'm gonna type in about 10 rows for us to use, okay? Whoops. Then I come over here, maybe I want to have some kind of a pretest score, so I'm just going to type in um, made up data here as well. Okay, and um, they can be any values you want. This is just for the, for the sake of practice, you may want to follow along with this. Okay, so you have to actually hit enter to, to get it to register. Then I'm going to come here and I'm going to do this might be my post test score. So I'm going to type in some some values here um, and it might be I'm just assuming people are going to mostly make gains on this. Maybe maybe some do and some don't. OK, maybe some make um, huge gains and some small gains. But um, if this is just all made up data here. OK. 
All right, so there we go. All right, I had a brief issue with, with the recorder, but um, what I want to show you next is how to add these um, variable names like I did. Um, I apologize, my video stopped, and so I didn't get to see it. Basically what happens here is just say var1, var2, var3 here, is if I click on the header here you're on your var1, you'll see that this turns blue. When that turns blue, you can come over here, and when you come over here, you can type in, it should say var1 there, you can backspace over that, type in gender, and that gives you the name of the variable. Down here, underneath it, you can type in a more extended label. Um, I'm not sure how long, what the limit is to that, but it can be quite long. Descriptive label of your variable, right? So then I'll um, click on this second one. It highlights this column blue. I can come over here, and now I can edit this to, to be whatever variable name I want. And underneath it, a more descriptive label. And the same with this one here. So I've, so I've added those in there. And then um, click back on gender. And what you're going to see, um, of course, it's, it's got here what I've entered. Um, we also have the option to add in a va value label. That often makes sense for categorical variables. Here I want to keep track of the fact that one is male, two is female. So there's various ways we can add variable labels. Um, this is one way, is to do it here um, within this screen. Um, in order to do that, click on value label, and you shouldn't see really anything here. If I do this, click on this the arrow, you see none. Basically what that's telling me is there's no labeling schemes that exist yet in this data set. In Stata, to give, assign labels um, to values, so to assign one is male, two is female, I need to first create that labeling scheme, okay? And then I need to apply that scheme to this variable. The reason why that's useful is if you imagine you have something like liquor skill data where you have strongly disagree, disagree, and so forth. Um, assign one, two, three, four, five. Maybe you want to um, apply that to 20 variables or 100 variables in your data set. You only have to define that once and then you just apply that to everything. And so in the end, it becomes a little more efficient in that case. But here, um, there aren't any defined for me yet. So I can click on the triple dot, okay? And when I click on that triple dot, so this little window opens for me and allows me to create the labels. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to click on, well, let's make um, create or edit, okay, a labeling scheme. I'm going to click on create. And I've got to give a name to this labeling scheme. Now I want to be careful because this labeling scheme is not a variable name. It's... Um, it's just a, a, a name of a way of labeling. I'm going to use gender, but I'm going to do in all caps to remind me this is different than my variable gender. It happens to be the same here because it makes sense, okay? But, I mean, you could even call it gender label just to keep track for yourself. This is a labeling scheme I'm creating. And I come down here, and I want to now tell it this labeling scheme requires a one for a male and a two for a female. So I'm going to put one right here and I'm going to type down here male. I can um, do it all lowercase however I want, but that will show up like if I make tables or whatever. Click add. Okay. Now I'm going to come here and I'm going to say two female add. So now um, I've got this labeling scheme. One is male, two is female. Okay. And click OK. This now exists, but you notice um, it's not nothing's changed here at this point. Um, I haven't applied that to this variable yet. It's just floating out there in memory, this way of labeling, okay? But it's not applied to this, okay? So what we're going to do is I'm just going to close that now. And I'm going to, if I click back on gender, I'm making the column blue, click up here. Now if I come to value labels, I have that option. Okay, of course I spell things wrong all the time, but oh well. <laughs> so once I've done that, it shows here those values. 
Um, so so it's, it's changed it to show the actual label, value label, as opposed to the number. The numbers, of course, still exist in the system. It still is ones and twos in its coding. But it tells you what the coding represents here now instead of just giving the ones and twos. So, of course, we wouldn't do that with pretest and potest. The only case in which we might do that is if we do, in addition to having this basic interval ratio data that we have here, we also have some codes like maybe we have put in a negative 9 to represent missing, or we might sometimes use several different missing codes to represent different kinds of missing, like a negative 8 means um, they were unavailable to take, they didn't show up to take the test. Negative 9 means they refuse to take a test, and, you know, or negative 10 means it doesn't apply to them or something like that. If we wanted to keep track of codes like that, then we might also um, create some value labels for these variables. But in most cases, we wouldn't. Okay, so I have this done now. Now to save it, um, this here saves data, okay? This button does not save results, saves data, okay, just like the save up here, okay, and that opens the same way as this one here. They're the same icon, mean the same thing. So I can save my data now if I choose to, or I could go out of here and then save it from here. Um, either way is fine, just click on save, find some place where you want to save it in your directory and, and give it a name to this data set. Okay, so I've, I've got this data here. I didn't actually save it, but um, you may want to save it. And if you didn't before, save it here, and you'll see the save name show up here for your data set. Okay, I also want you to notice we've got all kinds of stuff here now. This down here is our um, the actual code that we used, all right, to, to do all this. Okay, the actual coding we did. And, it, and the same thing is here, the actual coding. So this gives me all my coding here. This is my output window. It gives the command and then it gives any output associated with. There's not really any output associated with creating variables so that you would see in a results window. So all you see is the same thing that's, that's over here. Okay, so let's come back over here um, to our command window. Now we see over here also our variables. Gender with our, our name and our labels. I can make those smaller or bigger. I can make this whole section smaller or bigger to see it how I want to see it. The only real issue to keep in mind is if you make this window too small, sometimes when you have tables that like wrap around and look funny. So that's something to be aware of. Um, but you do want to keep this always so you it's available to you because there will be times when you want to um, repeat something that you've done again so that you can um, see something more than um, see something more than once, run it again, modify something, which, which we wouldn't we wouldn't do particularly here. Okay, so this is my um, the basic intro, how to open and use data. So I have